and welcome to this Back in Black edition of Hillbilly DVD Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing the last film by John Frankenheimer, the fucking casino caper crime flick, Reindeer Games. Reindeer Games is a film from 2000, the last film from John Frankenheimer, fortunately legendary Hollywood director, directed so many fucking classics. Second last movie was Ronin, his last movie was Reindeer Games, so he really wrapped up his career with some caper, fucking crime type bullshit, you know, high action, high drama, high tension. Reindeer Games, often really much maligned movie, a lot of people don't like it, a lot of people have a shitty memory of it and stuff. I think a lot of it has to do with like Ben Affleck backlash from the early 2000s or whatever. But the basic story is the movie opens up, Ben Affleck is a convict, he's in a fucking prison, his fucking cellmate is like, you know, they're both about to get out of jail, but his cellmate's always going on and on about this hot girl he's writing. Ben Affleck just don't believe it, man. He's like, you, you know, you're going to get out, this chick's going to be ugly and shit, she's going to have like three teeth, you don't want to want nothing to do with her. But the guy's like, nah, she's, you know, we're going to get married and all this bullshit. Ben Affleck's like, whatever. Next thing you know, a couple of days before fucking, you know, they're about to get released and stuff. A big fucking riot breaks out because there were some cockroaches and some jello. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's fucking silly plot contrivance and shit, but there's some cockroaches in the jello, so everybody fucking goes crazy and shit. Next thing you know, Ben Affleck, his buddy gets stabbed and shit. Oh man, my friend died, he just was gonna get released. A couple days later, Ben Affleck gets released. He was walking out of fucking jail and shit. He sees Charlize Theron is the girl who been writing his friend and shit. And of course, you know, this is early, to, you know, 2000 Charlize Theron, way before she, you know, she got all uglied up for that fucking shitty movie monster. This is her in her prime and shit. I know people like to say, oh, Charlize Theron's so beautiful now. I don't know, man. After she did that movie Monster and got on Nancy, she never looked quite the same. This is young in the prime Charlize Theron, piece of ass. The only thing's fucked up. And she got some fucked up nasty red hair, but oh well, whatever, you know what I mean? So Ben Flex walking out, and he's like, damn, man, like, you know, she's going to stand there. She don't know he's dead. She's she going to think, like, well, I don't know what she's going to think, but she's just going to be a sad bitch. So he walks up, and he starts, you know, pretending to be his cellmate and shit. Plus, because she's hot, he probably wants to hit it and shit. So to get together, he's pretending to be his dead cellmate and shit. Next thing you know, she's throwing the pussy on the left and right. There's a really good fuck scene like they fuck really hard in a cabin I think maybe some of this was influenced by the fact that uh, John Frankenheimer was dating the porn star Chrissy Canyon at the time maybe he got some tips and shit how to fuck girls real hard so he really filmed this fucking scene all fucking hard and shit so f after a few days of just fucking 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 in his hotel room Ben Affleck Charlize Theron they're out shopping to get some groceries to come back next thing you know they get ambushed some fucking robbers but it's not really some robbers it's fucking Charlize Theron's evil brother Gary Sinise and his band of evil motherfuckers played by Danny Trejo, fucking Clarence Williams III, Donald Logue. These motherfuckers beat the shit out of Ben Affleck and they're like, we heard from these letters that used to work at a casino. We want to rob that casino. You're going to help us. Ben Affleck finally comes clean. Hey, man, I ain't, I ain't my cellmate and shit. I'm just a different guy. Like, I got arrested for some car thievery and shit. He explains to them he didn't really work in no casino. He can't help him rob and shit. But they don't believe him. They want to pistol whip his ass about a hundred times and shit. Beat the shit out of him. Make him puke blood. Finally, he fucking is like, hey man, these fuckers are going to either kill me or make me rob this casino. So I'll go along with it and talk and figure out something to get, you know, out of this shit. The middle part of the movie is kind of Ben Affleck trying to make an escape plan, trying to get out of fucking robbing this casino these motherfuckers. He don't want to go back to jail. He's ready to go straight. He's tired of fucking all his, you know, criminal ways from the past and shit. So a bunch of different things happen without spoiling it. You know, he can't get away. He's got to go through with the casino. He goes in. They make him stake it out. He got a disguise on shit. Real bizarre, like, one line cameo from Ashton Kutcher in the casino and shit. I don't know what happened. Maybe he fucking, you know, say he owed somebody a favor. They owed him a favor or something. But he's in this movie for one line so you can see Ashton Kutcher come up and fucking run away. Literally like a 30 second performance. So the movie goes on. This being the director's cut actually, this version of the Blu-ray, it's a lot longer. Basically what happened was back in the day the studio, fucking Weinstein motherfuckers were like, listen, John Frank and we're making R-rated comedy, like dark humor, caper movie and shit, but we don't want to be too uncomfortable with motherfuckers. John Frank and come from the old school man, you seen Ronan, he likes to get that down and dirty fucking punch and kick and shoot motherfuckers shit. They're like, oh, soften this violence, soften this violence. So the theatrical version was kind of, it was still R, but it was softened up and shit so it wouldn't turn too many motherfuckers off, you know, Ben Affleck, mainstream motherfuckers. 
Well, this is director's cut, man. The difference is just about all the fucking scenes of people getting punched, kicked, and all this shit, and like, you know, fucking people have guns or hell. All that shit's longer the drama, the tension and shit. So I gotta say, this version of the movie works like really good. And I have to say, John Frank Howard being an old classic director, the movie is really slow paced, but I liked it. It helped me get into it more, helped me buy into the drama of the situation and how fucked Ben Affleck was. You know, having to be taking part in this robbery and shit. So I was really fucking into it and all that. Obviously, there's going to be a caper, taking down a casino. Of course, shit's going to go wrong. They robbed the fucking casino, you know. And I got to say, man, like, what really makes this movie is the cast. Sinise is great as a fucking bad guy. All the fuck, there's some great lines from Danny Trejo in an early role before he was Machete and all that shit. Clarence Williams III, Link from Mod Squad, man, he's got some real good hard ass. He just plays the old hard ass brother character that always whipping the shit out of Ben Affleck. So the dynamics of the gang and shit when they take down the casino is really fucking cool. Not ruining too much, but obviously shit's going to go wrong. Big shootouts and shit. Okay, my only criticism to this movie, man, because I love crime capers. I love everything coming together. I love a robbery and shit. But my only criticism is, instead of just going out on the big action scene, the movie kind of dwindles on past that a little more. Which is fine, whatever. We're going to wrap it up, get the, get the drama, the characters, shit. I'm cool with it. But they try to get really tricky, tricky with it. There's some twists and turns at the end of the movie. I'm not going to spoil, but like they're kind of like, really? Okay, it, and I have to think that the Weinsteins had some influence on us because they was making all them fucking screen movies around this time and they always wanted to trick and turn and fucking somebody pop up and do some crazy shit. So I think maybe the Weinsteins had an influence on the ending of the story and shit, you know, the twists and turns and whatnot. Especially the director's cut just being more long and drawn out and serious and fucking just having more violence and shit in it. You know, having a harder edge to it, I guess you could say. I liked it a lot. I'm going to give this director's cut a reindeer game 7 out of 10. Alright, on the picture and sound, now this is where some bed shit is going to come into play. I don't know what the fuck happened. This movie fucking, I don't know, it, like, it doesn't look horrible, horrible, but you, right as soon as you start watching, you know something's a little off. Basically what happens is they use some edge enhancement shit, some, like, digital sharpening tools to try to make the movie, like, look whatever. You know, I don't know, maybe it looked a little dull, maybe it looked a little flat, the film print they used. So they wanted to sharpen up and make it look better. Kind of ruins the look, kind of makes the movie, like, look kind of fake and shit. There's some digital noise reduction. I, you know, I think some of the skin tones and shit look waxy and shit. Not really film-like. Not a lot of real fine detail in the picture and shit. That kind of pissed me off. I was kind of disappointed. Also, this being the director's cut, they had to put a lot of footage back into the movie that was taken off the theatrical. And it's not that the new footage is like lesser quality. Like it all looks about the same quality. Like there's some movies where they put the old footage back in, like on the Highlander 2 Blu-ray, and it just looks like shitty. Like it looks like they just cut to a VHS tape. No, 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 it's not like that. But whenever it makes the little jump to the new footage, I don't know what happened, but it's like they didn't quite like sync it up right or something, because there's just like a little mini cut. So like Basically what happened is like when they go from the footage, like they'll be moving across the room and just be like a little skip, just like a little skip. And you know it's it about six or seven times in the movie, it'll start to play on my nerves and shit. So I don't know, like I, I wish they would have integrated this footage better because you know it's kind of whack. Usually you don't see that on these director extended cuts or whatever. Now with this picture being kind of fake looking, kind of DVD-esque and shit, at least the audio comes up, man. They got the five points around, you know, DTS, HD Master Show. Shit, you know, it's not as good as like a real modern, big budget movie, but the gunshots sound cool, the robbery shit sounds cool. So Ranger Games picture and sound, I'm sorry, man. They kind of fucked it up. I don't know if it's because they had to go back and try to do director's cut. They didn't have a good master. I don't know what the fuck happened, but they kind of shit the bed on it. Ranger Games picture and sound, I'm sorry. I can only give it fucking 5.5 out of 10. Alright, special features, thankfully they come through on that shit. This being John Frankenheimer's last movie, they got the director's uh, commentary, so he tells you a lot. And then he's honest, man, he talks about all the shit he went through with the studio, how they rushed the movie, how the movie then got delayed because they had to do the reshoots or the recuts and all this bullshit. He tells you how hard it is to make a fucking movie. He don't sugarcoat it or whatever, but, you know, he talks about how he just wanted the movie to be harder and grittier, and that's why this director's cut. So, I was cool with director commentary, plus, I mean, it's the last fucking one. John Frankenheimer's ever going to do big respect to him and shit. They also have a behind the scenes featurette. It's not a full blown documentary, really. It's featurette short bullshit. Original theatrical cut alternate scenes is kind of like where they show like the the difference between this cut and the theatrical. I don't know. It's, to me, that's kind of waste of time. Whatever. If you want to see the theatrical shit, go watch. You know, theatrical cut somewhere. So special features: the Frankenheimer commentary being the main thing on display that you want to focus on here, but the rest kind of be fluffy, not be good or whatever. I'm going to give it five out of ten. Alright, so that's it for Reindeer Games, man. I gotta say, 
a movie that's really shit on. Everybody want to pull their pants down, shit on it about 2001, 2002. That's fine. I get it. Y'all hated Ben Affleck because he fucking tapped the ass of Jenny from the block and all that bullshit. That's fine. It's prerogative. But now, after the town and gone, baby gone and Argo and shit, you're all blowing fucking Ben Affleck. Back then, you're like, Ben Affleck is a con. He fucking coming out of prison. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Ben Affleck is a pretty boy. But now, you motherfuckers, y'all get hard dicks over the town and shit. So go back, give this chance. You know, the disc is a little flaw, whatever. I picked it up for five bucks, or, and I never had it on DVD, so I ain't crying. I'm, I'm still glad I got it and shit. So watch the movie now with your new appreciation of Ben Affleck. Stop giving him shit. Stop fucking player hating. And watch the movie for what it is. Him against Gary Sinise is some good fucking shit. So get into it, motherfuckers. Quit hating.